hey, so you might notice I'm not quite as formal. Um, that's because in addition to my other stuff, my usual stuff for the week, I also defended my dissertation and passed. So that's a big step in my journey. Um, but for that reason, I'm a little more relaxed today since I had that extra stuff to deal with this week. So today we're going to talk about virtue ethics. That's the next theory. Um, I thought I would start with a little personal illustration of this. So when I was younger, I joined a community soccer league in my little hometown. So we would go to this park that had soccer fields in it, and we would do soccer games that were just community, not for school or anything. Um, and I was kind of a bookworm when I was growing up, so I didn't really know how to do soccer at the time. And I kept saying, well, just tell me the rules. Just give me a list of rules, and I'll apply them, and then I'll know how to do soccer. And they had to keep saying, no, you've just got to do it a bunch of times until you get good at it. Like, your body has to learn how to do it. You have to get used to it. You have to get, it has to be a habit. And that's what virtue ethics starts with. Um, if you think about utilitarianism and Kantianism, they're both rule-based. You know, utilitarianism says, here's your rule. Something's right if it promotes the most happiness for everyone affected. Kantianism says, here's your rule. Something's wrong if it doesn't respect um, rational persons as valuable for their own sakes, or alternatively, if it's inconsistent of you. Um, virtue ethics says, well, maybe that's not how ethics works. You know, if you think about any kind of athletics, if you're in football, if you're in baseball, tennis, whatever, you don't learn a bunch of rules, then how to apply them. You don't go into a game saying, all right, I looked at the rule book. I know that like at 15 minutes in, I'm going to do this rule, right? It's more like you do a bunch of drills, you do a bunch of practices and matches and scrimmages and stuff, and then you um, get these skills in yourself, right? You become the kind of person who knows how to do baseball, who knows how to do soccer, football, tennis, whatever, right? Um, and in the moment when you're on the field, you don't have to think about the rules to know what to do. You're just able to do it because of the kind of person you've become. And virtue ethics leans really heavily on that and says maybe ethics, maybe morality is like that. Maybe instead of coming up with rules for morality that we then figure out how to apply to our situation, maybe we should think about methods for becoming a certain kind of person. And then when we're in a situation, we'll know what to do. We'll know what's right. So that's the basic idea behind virtue ethics. Um, so sometimes um, there's this skill analogy. Um, you're supposed to think of becoming a good person as something that you practice. Like you'd practice an instrument, like a violin or a piano. That's how you get good at that. Or like athletics, you know. Um, I can remember when I couldn't really throw stuff. You know, I'd be like, ah. Oh, and it just wouldn't go where I wanted it to go. You know, you lift it up and you throw it and suddenly it's behind you instead of the direction you were pointing. Um, you just got to throw stuff a bunch of times, right? Until you don't even think about it anymore. Your arm can just fling it off or whatever. Um, some In virtue theory, that's kind of how virtues are thought of. They're these things that you just instill by practicing them over and over and over. So virtue ethics leans really heavily on this idea that the skill analogy is supposed to help you think about not just what a good person does, but how you can go from being a person who doesn't know what to do, who has no idea what's right or wrong, to being someone who's a good person, who knows what to do, knows right and wrong. We all start like that, right? We all start as babies, as little kids, not really knowing right from wrong. How do we get better? How do we develop as people by practice, right? Um, utilitarianism and Kantianism don't really say anything about that. So virtue ethics kind of prides itself on thinking, well, we take children into account. 
we can talk about how children can become good people. If you find yourself already an adult and you've never become a good person, we can talk to you about that too, using the skill analogy, things like that. So when I say virtue, I should also clarify. In virtue ethics, um, in our society, we kind of just use virtue to mean a whole bunch of things, like just a vague idea that people have integrity or whatnot. Um, but in virtue ethics, it has a pretty specific meaning. It's a, ver it's a concept that you can deploy in your theory. And it's supposed to be a character trait that helps you do the right thing for the right reason. Right? So there's a couple elements there. I'll break them down for you. If you have a virtue, it's supposed to be something that's reliable, regular, um, dependable, you know? So if you have a virtue of, say, honesty, you're not just going to be honest by accident, or you're not just going to be honest when it's convenient for you. You're going to be honest whenever it's the right thing to do, right? You're going to be reliable. You're going to be regularly honest. If you're a fair person, you're not just going to be fair when it benefits you. You're going to be fair when it means you don't get as much of the pie as you want, but everybody gets a piece or whatever, right? Um, so that's the first thing. It's a character trait because it's sort of in you all the time. It's been instilled in you. So it's regular and it's reliable. Um, and it's supposed to help you do the right thing for the right reason. Right? You're not doing the right thing without understanding why you're doing it. You're not just on autopilot doing the right thing. No, you're doing it for good reasons. So if you're being brave, you know that's because, um, you know, there's something worth facing the danger for. Or if you're being fair, that's because you know that other people matter, not just you. You know, if you're being honest, it's because you care about the truth. So if you have a virtue, it's a character trait, which means it's regular, it's reliable, it's part of who you are. And it helps you do the right thing for the right reason. So you have the right motives and reasons for what you do. Right? That's what a virtue means. What does that look like? Well, one way to characterize virtues, this goes back to Aristotle, is that uh, virtues are the skill to manage emotions in the right way. So if you think about courage, you can think of courage as the skill to manage fear in the right way, right? So everybody feels fear. The virtuous person is going to feel fear, just like the non-virtuous person. But if you've got the virtue of courage, you've practiced so much that you have the skill to be like, well, I know I'm afraid, but I know this other thing is really important and I should go for it even though I'm afraid that I might get hurt if I do it. So you manage your fear. You put it in the right place. You act not just based on your emotion, but based on what you know is the best thing to do. Right? Or if you are fair, uh, maybe you want a whole bunch of stuff, like you're scared you won't have enough, like stockpiling during a pandemic. right? But if you're a virtuous person, you feel that desire to have enough stuff but you say, well, hold on, how much do I actually need? And how much do other people need? Let me manage my desire to stockpile stuff for my own security, right? So virtue, you can think of it as the skill that you get through practice to do the right thing for the right reason, reliably. And what is doing the right thing for the right reason? Well, for human beings, it's usually uh, managing your emotions in such a way that you go for what you know is best rather than whatever your emotions are clamoring to tell you that you need. That's kind of a basic outline of virtue theory. Um, you've got the idea that it's about what kind of person you become. You've got the idea of the skill analogy that you 
get these skills by practice. And then you've got this concept of virtue as a reliable character trait to manage your emotions in such a way that you do the right thing for the right reason. So next time, next video lecture, I'll talk to you about what virtue ethics does about animals and the environment. I'll talk to you about one approach from an important virtue theorist called Rosalind Hursthouse. I'll see you then.